um, it's nice to have all these various fields. There's so much to talk about. And we will be talking about the law today, but our next speaker is, I would say, and have said many times, the world's most renowned historian on cannabis and the history of cannabis and hemp around the world. Chris Bennett's published more books, talked more, done more work than uh, most uh, other people in this field combined. And he's been an inspiration to me uh, personally. He's been a personal friend as, as well as uh, a very excellent person to work with in this field. And I understand he's been working on a new book and we're going to get half an hour of some of the most incredible, excellent, fresh from the press sort of stuff. And thank you so much for coming again. I mentioned I've written a couple of books on the history of cannabis. The first one was uh, Green Gold, The Tree of Life, Marijuana, Magic, and Religion, which came out in 1995. It was a study of cannabis in different cultures and religion uh, with a focus on magical religious use. Um, following that book, uh, when I was researching that book, I came across the work of uh, etymologists and uh, anthropologists working in the 30s who said there were Hebrew references to cannabis under the name Cannabosum, and I put together another book, Sex, Drugs, Violence, in the Bible, following that tradition uh, along. Um, just been completing my third book, uh, Cannabis and the Soma Solution. <laughs> just a rough manuscript right now. Um, are people familiar with Soma? Does anybody know what Soma is out there? Heard of Soma? So one a couple. Okay, well, Soma is the source of the Vedic religion, the Hindu religion. And it was a beverage made from a plant thousands of years ago. And although it's uh, part of the Indian religion, getting a lot of back feedback here, um, it's, uh, it's actually an Aryan plant. started with an uh, uh, Indo-European culture, uh, probably near Poland, Ukraine. In fact, the oldest evidence we have the oldest, oh, but it's still testing. Are we working? Keep going. Okay, the oldest evidence we have for cannabis actually comes from the Ukraine in Eastern Europe. And it's for cannabis consumption, not for hemp. We're not talking about hemp, but cannabis consumption. And uh, um, we have evidence of burnt cannabis coming from the Ukraine region around 3500 BC with a culture known as the Saradeni Stog. And these people were actually originated horse riding and uh, obtained the horse as well. An act that was probably accomplished by hemp ropes from what we can find from archaeological material from the, uh, uh, from the area as well. And these people burned cannabis initially in braziers, inhaling the fumes and obvious religious rites. But in later times, they started to make a hemp beverage, or at least this is the speculation of a number of archaeologists, including Andrew Sherat, a well-known British archaeologist. Sherat points to clay vessels with cord impressions on them, hemp cord impressions. And he says that these vessels actually held a hemp beverage. He points to poppy-shaped vessels, vessels found in the Mediterranean region, which were known to contain uh, poppy uh, drinks as well, as is evidence of, of, of people making vessels to symbolize what they carried. And says this is what was the case with the cannabis uh, hemp beverages of, of Eastern Europe. And these people being horse riders, actually spread cannabis throughout much of the ancient world. In fact, uh, they were the Proto-Indo-Europeans, and Indo-European language is uh, the source of the English language, the German language, the French language, Sanskrit in India, uh, um, uh, uh, Persian, Persian language as well, all over the world it spread. And uh, everywhere the Indo-European language went, it came with these horse, horse riding people who were cannabis consumers. And recently, um, there's been a number of discoveries related to this. Uh, we found Caucasian mummies in China dating back as far as 2000 BC. And it's totally changed our concept of history and the movement of people throughout the ancient world. Um, they found on one of these mummies dating back about 2700 years ago, about two pounds of cannabis, all female cannabis, and cultivated for drug purposes. We're not talking about hemp here. We're talking about marijuana cultivated for its psychoactive properties. And so this, this changes a lot of concepts about, about cannabis and how, how far back it goes with culture. These people were Tocharian speaking people. And in fact, they wore plaid, much like the Celts and stuff like that. And in Western Europe, Celts and Druids spoke Tocharian language as well. And what happened is, in, in China with these people, and the people in Western Europe, Druids and Celts, where we also have evidence of cannabis being consumed in drinks, and 
being burnt in braziers from a number of sites in Western Europe uh, dating back to 700, 800 BC, likely uh, symbolize a time in the Ukraine where they're suspected to have been a mini ice age and these people split off and went in different directions. Some of them going to the west and becoming Celts and Druids and carrying on their kind of tradition there. And some of them going up initially into China where they uh, uh, came into contact with Chinese forces that were familiar with industrial hemp as far as like paper, fiber, uh, for cloth, seeds, for food and stuff like that. But weren't really uh, seeming to be using it for uh, drug content at that early time. In fact, the name Soma, which I, I, I talked about there earlier, the name of the uh, Sanskrit beverage, source of the Vedic religion, which was made from a plant, um, <coughs> comes from the Chinese language. Huma was one of the original names for cannabis. And in Persian, this became Heoma. And then in Sanskrit, as it traveled into India, it became Soma. And uh, we know in the Taoist religion that they used cannabis in a very, very similar way to the Sanskrit and Hindu religion. And really what all this evidence is pointing to is that all of the world's major religions, Hinduism, uh, uh, Christianity, Judaism, Taoism, and, and through them, all the religions that grew out of them, Buddhism, Sikhism, and stuff like that, originated with a cannabis-consuming cult um, going back you know, thousands of years. So uh, um, this has also opened up the idea of trade in the Asian world. Initially, up until about a decade ago, it was thought that a Silk Road, which opened up trade throughout the whole Asian world, uh, and it opened up about 135 uh, BC. Now they're thinking that this was as early as 1000 to 2000 BC. Uh, um, and uh, there's evidence in, in uh, Egypt of Chinese silk being found in the hair of Egyptian mummies that are like 1200 BC. So there's a wide range of, uh, uh, of trade over this silken road, which is in fact when you really start to study the history of cannabis was as much as a hempen highway as a silken road because this was a major transference point for cannabis throughout the ancient world. And we know this because we can trace that uh, uh, through language, the words used for cannabis in a number of different cultures, and all these different cultures have an Indo-European word for cannabis, whether it be in Mesopotamia or Babylonia, where cannabis was burned because the uh, fragrance was pleasing to the gods and was used as a, as a medicine, where it was known as cannabo. And this is uh, the Mesopotamian version of the Indo-European word for cannabis, cannaba, uh, um, which goes back to even proto-Indo-European, the indo european language. So we're talking about way, way older than any sort of written language, and already there's evidence that it's disseminated through, 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 throughout the ancient world. In Egypt, they drank a drink uh, called Nepenthe, which has been uh, uh, um, uh, suggested as cannabis by a number of scholars for a number of centuries. Nepenthe was used in funerary rites, uh, was used as a medicine, uh, was used to relieve grief. And uh, Sir Richard Burton, the adventurer, not the uh, 20th century actor, um, the 19th century adventurer, suggested that Nepenthe actually came from uh, uh, um, the uh, Indo-European word banga, which is also in Sanskrit, which is another name of cannabis, derived from this same cannabis term. See, any of the words, uh, like in French, chandra, in uh, German, hanf, in uh, Sanskrit, sana or bang, all of these words contain the an, and that's how they connect them all. And it's through this initial an that 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 we can identify these words, including the Hebrew kanabasim. And it, clearly in the Bible, uh, it's it, when we when we see references to kanabasim, it's identified as an item of trade. And Ezekiel comes in on a caravan from Tyr, and Jeremiah, when he's uh, condemning the use of cannabis, refers to it as coming from a distant land. So it was all coming via this, this ancient trade network. And when it came through this ancient trade network, it often came with a mythology and uh, 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 religious intent that, that it originated with, with these with the same people. And that's what's so interesting about these early uh, Vedic and Hindu uh, uh, references because they clearly identify the Soma and Heoma, as it was known from the, the Chinese words as mentioned, as both a medical plant and a spiritually healing plant and a nutritious plant, and also refer to it for fiber purposes, which really narrows down the potential candidates. And when we go back to the ancient uh, Sanskrit literature, we can see that uh, um, in the 500 BC, there's a, 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 a text called the Satapatha Brahmana, and it clearly identifies that Soma was made from Sana, which is the old Sanskrit.